All right, so we've talked about what happens to a soil that's initially dense or in this initially loose as it's sheared, but we've only talked about the initial condition and the final condition. What I want to do here is talk about what happens in between, right? Because the soil slowly will dilate or contract as shear strain is applied to it. So let's take a look at some stress paths here. And I'll, I'll lay out what I've done. I've, I've set up a, a grid of um, three plots, tau HV, so that's like a shear stress. Imagine we're doing a simple shear test, kind of like these stress paths up here, right? So we're going to have some initial sigma v naught prime, apply some tau HV, and then we reach a condition of failure. So we have tau HV versus gamma, stress versus strain. We have epsilon V versus gamma, so that's volumetric strain versus shear strain. Um, sorry, I think I just said strain here. I meant shear strain, right? We have to be careful about what strain component we're talking about. And then on this one, we have vertical effective stress, uh, sigma V naught prime plus delta sigma V versus shear strain. So the x-axis is just shear strain for all three. Um, I have three plots up here for a soil that's initially dense or dilative, and then three plots down here for a soil that's initially loose or contractive. And we're going to draw them for two different loading conditions, drained and undrained. So uh, drained will be green. Let me switch to that pen color. All right, and let's, um, let's do this starting with the easy one, right? We know that for this drain loading condition, sigma v prime is going to be kept constant. So we can just draw a line here. There's sigma v naught prime. And uh, delta sigma v is equal to zero for this drain test. We're not going to increase the vertical load. We're just going to shear it and let it change volume. So if we come up here, right, that would be uh, this case over here, where we've got some change in height going on in a constant sigma v naught prime. All right, so what that means is that our, our curve right there is literally just a horizontal line, about as boring as it gets. That's actually not a very good horizontal line. Let me try that again. There we go. Okay, so sigma v naught prime is constant. That's an easy one. Uh, all right, let's talk about epsilon v. We know that we have two conditions. There's epsilon v equals zero at the beginning, right? Because we're gonna measure volumetric strain from the point of consolidation uh, as shear is imposed on the soil. So we initially consolidate it, and then as we're shearing, our reference is there. So epsilon v0 is at the start of shearing. Uh, and then since it's dilative, we know that it's going to have um, a contractive uh, final strain, right? So, uh, sorry, a dilative final strain. So it's going to grow. Contraction is positive. I was getting confused there between the sign convention and the actual behavior. So in this case, it's going to be finally uh, dilative, which would be a negative volumetric strain, right? So here's the negative strain right there. And we're going to reach a condition out here at very large strain, where um, at large shear strain, where it's not changing volume anymore. So all we have to do now is fill in what happens in between. So these are the endpoints that we've talked about, the initial condition and the final condition. Let's just fill in what happens in the middle. Okay, the only thing you have to remember to draw this curve is that soil is generally initially a little bit contractive. As you start shearing it, it tends to contract a little bit before dilating. So we're going to have kind of a little bump up here at small strain, and then it comes down and reaches this steady state condition where it's not really um, dilating anymore. Okay, so even though there's some permanent volumetric strain here, the dilation is zero because the rate of volume change with shear strain is zero. So there's been some permanent strain. That's why we define dilatancy in terms of rates. Uh, okay, and then the stress strain curve, you know, soil stress strain curves are just kind of curved like this, and then they reach a plateau at some point. All right, now let's do the uh, under. Actually, I'm going to make this one a little bit lower, like right there, just to make some room. Okay, let's do the undrained one. For undrained, the easiest one is the volumetric strain, right? We know that there's no volume change happening. That's the boundary condition we're imposing. We're telling the control system, do not move vertically, shear the soil at constant volume. So what that means is that we end up with zero right there. So that's our easy one now for this plot. Okay, now when we go to sigma v prime, okay, what we need to do is look at what happened to the soil when we sheared it drained and kind of mimic that behavior over here for what's going to happen to the effective stress. 
If the soil is trying to dilate, that means it's trying to grow, we're having to increase the vertical stress to keep it from growing. Therefore, we're going to start here at the beginning, and then we're going to end up at some big, bigger effective stress up here, because now the soil has tried to grow during shearing, but we've suppressed that growth. And then the other thing that I'll point out is that initially the soil was a little bit contracted. That means that we're going to build up a little bit of, um, well, we're going to decrease the effective stress a little bit right at the beginning. So, oops, wrong pen color. So the resulting curve is going to look something like this, right? So that's our um, sigma v prime versus gamma curve. All right, now comes the really important question. The whole reason we're doing all of this is whether the drained or undrained case is going to be stronger. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the vertical effective stress at the end of shear right here, right? So we've sheared it, we've reached some condition of high strain. How much vertical effective stress is there? Well, that will tell us which one's stronger, right? The one that has more confining pressure on it will be stronger. So in this case, sigma V prime is higher for the undrained loading case. Therefore, suppressing the dilation actually makes the soil stronger in this case. And you end up with a stress strain curve that's up there. That's why I went back and redrew that green one. I knew I needed to make room for the red one. Uh, okay, now we've done the initially dense one. This was the dilative soil. Let's go through and do the uh, initially loose one. Uh, once again, we're going to start here at zero, or sorry, at sigma v naught prime. And uh, for drain loading, it's going to stay sigma v naught prime. So we just go straight across. Uh, now for epsilon v, we're going to start at zero. Uh, the soil still is going to start out to be a little bit contractive. But now, since it's really loose, it's going to tend to contract the whole time. So keep in mind, we're talking about uh, this, this loading case now, right, where we're going from here to there during drain loading. So it's going to contract and settle down. Um, so what that means is that this curve just kind of monotonically increases, and we get positive volumetric strain because it's compressive. Um, okay, and then we can draw the drained curve like that. Now let's do undrained. Same rules apply. We have zero volumetric strain right there. Um, okay, now for this one, um, oops, for the sigma v prime versus gamma, okay, we're having uh, the, the drained one would have a tendency to contract, right? It's tending to settle. So if you were to shear that and it's trying to settle, that means you need to reduce the vertical load in order to prevent it from settling. Right, you have to ease up on it. You could think of the soil like a spring in some way, right? And as you're shearing, that spring is becoming softer. So in order to keep it at the same displacement, you have to ease up on the force. So what will happen is that the vertical effective stress will decrease the whole time for undrained loading. And you end up with a lower vertical effective stress at the end of shearing um, compared to the drained load case. So what that means is that undrained, the soil is weaker than it is drained. So here's uh, that curve, right? So in summary, um, dilative soils um, tend to be stronger in undrained loading than in drained loading because the dilative tendency is suppressed by an increase in effective stress, and that increase in effective stress makes the soil stronger. Therefore, if you suppress that tendency to dilate, you get this, a stronger soil. Um, contractive soil, on the other hand, is weaker in undrained loading. It's tending to contract. You're preventing that contraction from happening, and the particles aren't pressed against each other as hard, so the soil becomes weaker as a result. So those are pretty, actually pretty advanced concepts, not often taught in undergraduate soil mechanics courses, but I think it's really important to understand it, and it's, it's kind of intuitive. It's, it's really a fairly straightforward concept. So feel free to ask me questions if you have any about this, and um, we'll, we'll go to one more lesson on uh, shear strength, and then we'll move into the uh, next lesson on seepage after that.